people say that we're God, but we forget. Do you think that we're all God? I'm sure you've heard some people say that we're God, but we've forgotten that we're God. I, I can't answer a question like that exactly. I mean, I believe that the idea that we have a divine spark within is an extraordinarily beautiful, poetic, and necessary idea. And I think that if you act like that to yourself and other people, that things get radically interesting, <laughs> interesting mm -hmm. and deeply meaningful around you. And it, it seems to be a very good, a good proposition to guide your actions, you know, because what we're hoping you and me may be to the degree that we're being good yep. is that the spirit of truth in you is speaking to the spirit of truth in me. Mm -hmm. And so, and that is a reflection of the presumption upon which Western civilization is based explicitly, let's say, not to say that it doesn't permeate other cultures, but it's that spirit of truth that animates us and that redeems us and our societies as well. And hopefully that's expressed in the quality of our speech when we're free to speak. And so is that divine? Well, is that divine? Well, I don't think it's separable from thought itself in, in some sense. It might not be separable from consciousness itself. Is that divine? Well, you know, whenever you have that, is that this, it's an equation, right? Is one plus one equal to two? Well, one of the answers the to radical that is, well, say no. each of, well, each of those claims on both, on both sides of the equation are equally dubious in relationship to one another. Because what you're trying to do is to say, is God real? Well, what you say, what you're not saying is, we know what real is, and it's this. And God, does God fit into that category? It's also, we know what God is in order to assess it. Well, because you could reverse it and say, is real God? Mm -hmm. It's the same question, right? It's the same question. So here's one of, this, this is something I heard from Tyler Goldstein, who has his own theory of everything. He said, the ordinary, ordinarily, here's how it works. We look for, we have a definition and then we look for evidence and then dismiss what we've just defined if we don't find the evidence. He said, perhaps what we should do when it comes to God is... Instead of, instead of looking for God and then not finding it and then saying God doesn't exist, you use the fact that you didn't find evidence of God as an indication that you should alter your definition of God. Yeah, well, that's, that's, so that's sure, incredibly that's interesting. A, that's a now, perfectly reasonable sounds, approach to that problem. Right. Obviously, there's some, there's, yeah. However, hmm. Mm, no, that's a good, that's a really good observation. Right. Yeah, it shows you how tricky questions like that are, right? It's like, well, maybe you're looking in the wrong place. Maybe you formulated your search incorrectly. Like you don't know, because let's say you're aiming at the highest reality, right? It's like you're aiming at the highest reality. Well, how do you know you have the question formulated properly? Because if you, if you did, well, you'd have already found it. And so you might say, well, does the highest reality exist? Well... <laughs> Yes. We, we're back to the problem of the one that unites the many.